So we are back in our episode writer's portal. I just noticed this morning as I went on to the site that it looks like it has been updated. So it, look, it looks, it's looking pretty cool. So anyways, that's not why we're here today. So we are going to be talking about camera commands. So specifically how to use zooms, pans and follow. So I'm going to explain what each of those does. We are using the same code from the previous tutorial, which is using animations. And I'm going to go ahead and track my script and we're going to preview the scene just for the sake of revising what we did in the previous tutorial. If you haven't watched the video, go ahead and watch that and then, and then come back here. Or just stay, I don't know. It's, it's going to help you if you go from episode one all the way until here so you can go ahead and click the episode interactive tutorials playlist on my channel to catch up and to get up to speed as to what it is we're talking about today anyways back to the tutorial i'm going to go ahead and click save and preview okay so we're going to start over with the zoom command so what we're going to do is we're going to have the camera zoom in onto Alice's face and then we're going to have it zoom onto James's face. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to make life super easy. We're going to go to show helpers and then camera. We usually go to spot directing to change the characters and to move them in a specific location and to change the sizes. But now we're going to go onto camera and as you can see these three options open up which says Zoom, focus and reset. It is currently on zoom, which is what we want. And if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see in this box over here, it says at zoom on 00 to 100% in zero. In order to zoom in onto Alice's face, I'm going to start dragging my mouse. And as you can see, it starts to pretty much, you know, move the camera. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on focus and move it over to where Alice is. And I'm just going to keep playing around with this until I pretty much get Alice's face in the screen. So there we go. Boom. So these numbers, they pretty much move as to where it is that we are on the frame. And then it moves to, or we've, I've zoomed in onto about 167% in zero seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I like where it's placed, I'm going to go ahead and copy. And just before Alice starts speaking, I'm going to have it zoom on her. So I'm going to right click on line 13 and then go to paste. And then let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this whole thing. Excellent. So after she says hi and it zooms in her, on her face, let's have the camera zoom onto James's face and we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go over to show helpers, camera, and then since we're pretty much going to use the same zoom, I'm just going to move it over to focus on him. There we go. And do the same thing. I'm just going to copy that. So I want this to happen after she says hi. So I'm going to insert it on a line after the code where she says hi. And I'm going to paste it over there and then just clear this up a bit because it looks a bit messy and save and preview once again there we go so now let's have james say you look good today so as i showed you in a previous tutorial of how to get dialogue on screen I'm just going to pretty much recap that. So I'm going to type James name in all caps until it turns blue. Then I'm going to open a bracket, a round, a round bracket and close a round bracket. And I'm going to have him perform an animation. I'm going to have him wink. So I'm just going to type in wink and these flirt wink animations pop up and I'm going to go with flirt wink happy and then like I showed you in a previous tutorial, if you want to see what he's going to look like performing this animation, then all you've got to do is scroll down to the library to where it says animations by character. You click the plus next to the character's name that you want to see perform this animation. So I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to type in that exact animation in filter animation. So it was flirt underscore wink underscore happy. And this, it will pop up over here if the animation exists. And then all you've got to do is click on the eye next to that animation and it will show you what he looks like or what the character is going to look like performing it. So that's the one that I want. 
Then I'm just going to go back to my script, hit enter, hit backspace, and I'm going to have James say, you look good today. Type in, you look good today. And after you said that, this pretty much has nothing to do with this tutorial. This is just adding on from, in, from the previous one. So this is pretty much just adding on or concluding the, the two most recent videos that I've done. Again, you can find them in the playlist. Next, we're going to learn how to use the pan command, which is going to have the camera move from one zone of the screen. And as we know in episode, most backgrounds commonly consist of three different zones. So it will be zone one, zone two, and zone three, which I am going to be doing in the next tutorial, which is going to be about backgrounds in the art catalog. So stay tuned for that. And then with the zoom command, you can zoom onto any spot within the frame, but with pan, you can only pan to a certain zone. So currently, James is in zone one, Alice is zone two, and there's zone three where no one is currently occupying that space. And again, we will learn how to use zones. It's very helpful when coding episode story. I'm going to have the camera pan to zone 2 where Alice is standing and it's going to pan to the same zoom where she's standing, if that makes sense. So we're going to go at pan to zone 2. I'm going to do it in 3 seconds, so a very slow pan, but if you want it to go faster, you could even use 2 seconds or 1 second, even 0 seconds. So let's go ahead and save the preview from line 1. You don't have to always preview from line 1. I'm just doing it just so that you get the full gist of what the camera is doing, what the characters are doing, and so forth. Another thing that you want to take note of and do is that once you've zoomed in onto a specific location and you're previewing from line one many times, it's going to stay in the last zoom that you pretty much set, which is why it just stayed on the level that James was in. So since I'm constantly going back to that zoom and then replaying the episode, I'm going to go to line 2 and type at zoom reset. So that every time I preview this line, it resets the camera back to the original state. But then when we get to line 14, it zooms where I've set it. And when I get to line 19, it zooms where I've set it. But after that, I don't have another zoom reset because I don't want that in my story. But like I said, it's very good when you are going over the code multiple times to reset it. So I'm going to go and preview that again with the zoom reset in place. And it should like zoom out and then go back to the zooms when it reaches that line. So there we go. And then it zooms in on her. When I tap the screen, it zooms in on him. When I tap the screen again to indicate to episode, okay, let's move on to the next line of code. It's going to pan on that same level in that same zoom to Alice. So currently we've got this three zone background. Like I said, in zone one, we've got James. In zone two, we've got Alice. But if I cut to zone three, which is, an, which is another command when you're trying to cut between different zones. Let's say, for example, you've got a character standing in zone two and you've got a character standing in zone three. Just because the background might look different depending on the zone you're in. Again, stay for the next tutorial. And let's say, for example, you wanted to cut to zone two with character A is standing and then back to back to zone 3 where character B is standing because that's just how you've set it and you want the camera to like bah, bah, bah. you want the camera to go into the zone where the character is speaking so let's say for example I had another character in zone 3 what I'm going to type is at cut to zone 3 and you'll see no one standing there because I didn't code anyone to stand there but like I said, most backgrounds, and like I said, in Black Knight, which we see on line one, is one of the backgrounds. It's obviously a three-zone background as well. So we're going to pan to zone two, where she is standing, and then we cut to zone three, but no one's there. So what I'm going to do in zone three, I'm going to actually take this out. Just so I just wanted to show you that no one's standing in zone three. So we want the camera to now follow Alice to zone three. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use the at follow command. If I just have Alice walk to zone 3, she's going to just disappear off the screen completely. But in order for this to work, since we are on a zoom, I have to reset the zoom over here so that the next command is going to actually work. So I'll actually show you what it looks like without the reset. So I'm going to just take that away and then type the command which is at follow Alice, our character, to screen center in zone 3. So 
So let's just preview that and then I'll show you what that looks like. So all that happens is Alice walks over to zone 3 but we don't see her and the camera doesn't follow her. And the reason why that's happening is because we are still on a zoom over here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reset the zoom. Zoom reset. And then save and preview and you'll see the camera actually follows it to zone 3 now. Perfect. So... Just so that this makes a bit more sense, I'm actually going to switch the background out and I'm going to change it to this beach background, which I said, don't worry if you're confused as to where I got this background from. I'm going to be doing the background tutorial next. And then I'm going to save in preview and let's just see how this looks with a different background. It can be a little bit confusing the way that the camera is moving or whatever, just because the background is plain. So let's see if there's like actually a scene behind us. Okay, so it's, they're going to be doing the exact same things, but the background changes. So we are in zone 2 of this background now. It switches over to zone 1 where he's standing. Back to zone 2 where she's standing. And then we're going to follow her to zone 3. And as you can see, it makes more sense now that there's like a background. And it's not just this black screen where she's walking on, but you can actually now see that the camera is following her and it's moving with her. So that's pretty much all I wanted to discuss in this tutorial. I'm going to be filming the next one, like I said, in which I'm going to be discussing the art catalog. So stay tuned for that video. And don't forget to check out the episode interactive playlist on my channel where you get to see how we've pretty much built our way and worked our way up to this point in the tutorials. So if there are things in here that doesn't make sense to you, then go ahead and watch this video so that it makes more sense to you. Until we meet again.